Howdy folks, this is Shane and I just got a brand new sound card for my computer that I plan on using for the Guitar Search Saturdays when I do my voiceovers, as well as maybe having a portable backup solution for if I'm traveling and I need to record either a couple of guitar amps or something like that. So I thought I would try one of these. This is the Steinberg UR22 Mark II or MK2. So we're gonna go ahead and open this, see what's in the box, and then we'll hook it up and see how it sounds. Let's do it. So one of the reasons I decided on this particular model was the fact that it worked with just about everything. I used both Nuendo, which is basically Cubase, and it says it's also compatible with a Mac, with GarageBand. I don't use GarageBand, but I use Final Cut Pro, so I'm assuming I can just plug this thing in and it'll work. Fingers crossed. Let's open it up. USB 2.0 cable. We've got some download information for Cubase, which I don't need. Uh, we've got some, we've got an installation CD, believe it or not. My Mac doesn't even have an, a CD-ROM, but that's all right. We've got some instructions, which I'm not gonna even bother with. We have some other documentation, which I'm not gonna bother with either. And this is the actual unit, which we're all keen on checking out. So let's have a look at this. Actually, it's pretty heavy, I gotta say. It's heavier than I thought it was going to be, which is good, because it actually feels like a good quality unit. The great thing about this particular unit is it records up to 192 kilohertz. So for those who don't know what that means, essentially CDs are 44, then there's 48, which is kind of like where DVD is. It can sometimes go higher than that, depending on how it's mastered and all that kind of stuff. But this is actually way, way higher in terms of sound quality and what it's capable of recording. So that's the theory. I don't think I'll ever use it at 192 kilohertz, but at least it's got that option. So let's take a look at this. So it likes fingerprints, I've noticed already. So looking at the front panel here, we have two inputs. These are both mic and line inputs. You can see the hole in the center, so you can just plug a jack style cable in if you choose to. It has a gain for this preamp here and a gain for this preamp here. So there you go, they were both at full blast. We have a high Z or high Z input. So if you're playing say a bass guitar or a guitar straight in and then you're using software modeling, you push this in and it will give you a little bit more signal, which is pretty cool. The mix control allows you to mix between what you're recording and what you're hearing in playback if you're multi-tracking. The phone volume here for headphones, and we have a line out volume here, which is just called output. The reason I went for this one over the smaller model of the same thing with the one mic input is the smaller version had RCA outputs instead of these particular outputs here. But if I do ever hook them up to my KRK monitors, I'll just be using these outputs right here, nice and simple. I don't have to go buying new cables or downgrading to RCA. On the back, we also have a MIDI in and out as well. So if you're a MIDI user, you can get some use out of that. I'm not a MIDI user, but that's just one of those features of getting the larger one of these two units was it came with MIDI. That's where you hook up this cable right here. We also have an on and off switch right here as well. So you just turn the unit on and off at the back and it also has a phantom power switch here. So if you're using a condenser mic, which I'll be using, I'll basically just leave that on the entire time and it will power the actual microphone. So that's really, really cool. This unit doesn't actually come with a power supply. It's powered via this particular USB cable, which is awesome. That's another reason why I wanted it, but it also has an optional power function down here as well. On the bottom of the unit, we also have some rubber feet, and if we check it out, yep, it's really, really well balanced. It doesn't move or clunk around, it just sort of stays there. So I like it. It's nice and small, and it has all the features that I need to do the simple stuff that I want to work with. Let's see now how plug and play this unit is with my Mac. I've got the latest operating system on there. It's 10.12.6 as of this particular time of shooting this video. So let's just plug it in and hope for the best. I haven't done this yet, so hopefully it just works. That'll be awesome. So in goes the USB. Plug it into any of the ports. And now this is a USB 2.0 device. It doesn't need to be a 3.0 because it doesn't require that much speed when you're only doing two tracks at a time. So uh, 
I haven't got any notifications yet, so that's good. Might mean that it just works. The lights on the front are on, representing that it's on. I can see the USB light and the 48 volt one is also on, which is fan and power. So this is a video I was just working on before. All right, so this is a project that I was just working on in Final Cut. This doesn't actually require any voiceover, but it's what's opened. So let's open a window here and record a voiceover. Now, it's picking up the built-in microphone. Let's choose the Steinberg, there it is. It can see it already. And let's select that. So if I get up close to this microphone, you can see that the level is pretty low. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that up a little bit more. So now you should be able to see, hopefully if it's on the screen, that, yep, that you can see that the actual level right now is looking pretty good. All right, this video wouldn't be complete without an audio sample of how this thing actually sounds. So this particular part of this audio test, I've then synced the video with my audio that I'm recording straight into Final Cut right now in post so you can get a sense of how it sounds. This is a Rode NT1 microphone, one of my favorite microphones for doing anything like this or vocals, recording bands, all that kind of stuff when they're singing. I think it's a great sounding mic. From this part of the audio test forward, I've added a little bit of a voice enhancer as well as maybe a little bit of EQ just to show you what it's capable of with a little bit of an effect on the voice as well. I did test this before shooting this bit right now and I think it sounds pretty clean and tidy. Let me know your thoughts of this in the comments. Overall, this will be great. If you follow my channel, I do a series called Guitar Search Saturday where I'll be using this particular sound card from this point forward. So any of the future Guitar Search Saturday videos that come up will be used with this unit, with this Rode NT1 microphone or NT2, whichever one I use, and the sound quality should be pretty sweet. It sounds really nice. Overall, this is a great sounding little unit and it's built extremely well. I love the metal case. I think that's just a really great touch. It's not plastic. It doesn't feel cheap and nasty and has a bit of weight to it. So if I leave it on my desk, I'm actually gonna push it back here behind everything right now. But once I get it on my desk, it'll sit there. I don't have to worry about maybe knocking it off or anything like that. It feels like it's got a bit of weight to it, which is cool. The sound quality is great. The only disadvantage to this unit, say over the one that I had, which was the M-Track by M-Audio, is the fact that I don't have any LED indicators on the front, but that said, like I said, the software itself can monitor that kind of thing anyway, so it's not really that big a deal. If you're in the United States and you've been thinking about buying one of these, I'll post a link through to Amazon in the description below so you can click that and check it out on there as well. Thanks again for watching, my name's Shane. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. If you have any comments or questions about these, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching, folks, and I'll catch you soon. See ya. Thank you.